Hey, hey, it's Damon Brown of DameBrown.net. My main thing is helping you as a side hustler, solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I took a few Wednesdays off over the summer. Um, I went to TED. We were socially distanced, and it was great because, you know, I'm a big part of the, if you're a fan of the show, you know, I'm a big part of the tech community, or at least they're a big, big part of my life. So it was great to connect with them over in Montreal on a family vacation. Also, also socially distant, so kind of <laughs> spoken Lancaster. Um, I have that on the in the uh, the Bring Your Word show notes that I spoke in uh, Lancaster at the uh, Hippocampus Conference for writers. Shout out to to Donna and all the people that are organizing over there. But I am back on Wednesdays, and it's it's good to be back. Also awkward, you know. It's kind of like you stretch your muscles a little bit. You are watching the Bring Your Word show. I come to you every Monday, now Wednesday and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Again, my main thing is help you as a side hustler, solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. This is a fascinating time, which I say a lot. <laughs> I always find life fascinating, whether um, I'm like, I'm a little bit tired this week, so I'm a little bit down. Um, sometimes I have a good week and it's like, I feel a little bit more pumped. No matter what's happening though, life always feels exciting to me. It feels like there's always something different. Um, last couple of years have been challenging for sure for a lot of us, but I've had challenging years before that as you probably have to, uh, whether it's on a personal level or a career level. My main thing is helping guide you through whatever uh, seasons you happen to be in. As I talked about in my recent newsletter, um, whatever season you happen to be in, I wanna help guide you through that. And y'all are helping me have energy for, for the next thing. So bring your worth every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I think this is the 160th episode or so. So it's been going. I just started the show um, after being a one-on-one -on -one coach for several years. After being a best-selling author and all this stuff, I wanted to do something different, and uh, especially with us sheltering in place. Excuse me. So I sh started the show uh, late December of last year. And now we are in October and we're 160 episodes in, which is fantastic. Thanks all for y'all, all, all for y'all, all for y'all too, whatever that means. All of y'all for subscribing. Subscribers are going up. I got way more views than I have before and it's been a lot of love. So I appreciate that. I didn't, I want to make sure it was, uh, was acknowledged. And you, if you want to subscribe for free, uh, and get a notification every time I have a new episode, man, I have a new book coming out in January. Yeah, it's going to get really interesting. I got some stuff planned. It's going to be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it. You can subscribe for free at youtube.com slash brown or just click the link below. Shout out to y'all on Amazon as well. You'll see all the links on the side and you can click on that too. But you can always come to my YouTube channel to get more information. Speaking on Amazon and other platforms, Career Remix is coming out mid-January. It is right around the corner. Um, my second book that I wrote during quarantine not recommended because <laughs> it's really hard to do, especially since, since I have two little kids at home. Man, but it's absolutely worth it to, again, help y'all get to where you need to go. Um, and I put a lot of my energy into this book. It's Career Remix, Get the Gig You Want Based on the Skills You've Got. It is at the press as we speak. Like, I am not playing with y'all. It is coming. <laughs> like, it is proofread. The early gals are going out to the early reviewers like, we are not playing around. It is, it's almost Halloween over here in America. And um, I think y'all celebrate Halloween elsewhere too. In America though, it's definitely Halloween season. We got like skeletons and all that stuff hanging out in my neighborhood. Kids are enjoying it. Um, though not at night though, cause it scares them. But it's almost all, all already almost Halloween. And yeah, the book is coming out mid January. We're looking at January 11th. It might be going a little bit closer to, um, to late January because supply chain, you're going to see that hashtag happening a lot. <laughs> That's a challenge with physical books. But if you pre-order it, I guarantee that you will get it. If you get the digital version, I think it's still coming at the time that we're talking about January 11th. That's what I heard. But, you know, I might be mistaken. But please come and support the book. Um, again, I got some hot stuff that I can't quite talk about yet. I'm so excited. Stuff I've been working on behind the scenes. Can't wait to share it with you. all But in the meantime, please enjoy the show. And again, I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You subscribe for free. And I got 160, I'm not counting this one, 159 episodes that you can catch up on. They're talking about passive income, talking about emotional intelligence with Brene Brown, my big fanboy of hers, um, talking about personal habits and how to structure things. And we'll get into that a little bit more today. All right. So for today's episode, oh, before I do that, really important, black food. 
It is out today. It's a new book by a uh, longtime colleague and friend, Bryant, Bryant Terry. And he's a super conscious, thoughtful chef. Um, he's using his food for activism. And if you think about it, as I talk about that br really briefly in Career, Career Remix, my new book, where food is a sense of activism too. And once you all read the book and the intro, you understand what I'm talking about. I'm actually um, one of the essays in this beautiful book. I got to use two hands. This beautiful book just came out yesterday. It's already on the bestseller list, plural. So shout out to Bryant. But you, you want to check out my essay too, because I talk about vulnerability. Again, I'm big into Brene Brown. This is my, uh, <laughs> this is my, uh, my, my insight and my, my take on the, um, on the message of emotional intelligence, particularly how it applies to African-American men, which, you know, I'm an expert at that <laughs> since I am one. So it's fairly easy for me to talk about it. I think y'all will enjoy it. It really talks about not only the recipes and gorgeous stuff from um, from Michael Twitty, who's now famous from the from the uh, series High in the Hog, who I know back from Ted, to um, the leader, and I forget her name right now, of the NAP ministry, who talks about resting. If y'all know my work, I think naps are mentioned in almost every single book that I've written in the past five, six years, every single business book for sure. You know, I think I have a whole section. Yes, I have a whole intro on naps in my book, Pill for Now. So it's like, you know, so so her and I are absolutely on the same page. They have recipes and other things from, from, from them. I'm thinking it's about 300 chapters in there and I'm just one of the little essays. Some of them are essays, some of them, again, like Michael Twitty are essays as well as, as well as, um, um, Recipes, simple word to remember, recipes and great stuff like that. So please check it out. Shout out to Bryant. I love you. I love the work that you're doing. Thank you for having me be part of the ride. Again, black food is available everywhere and it's from his own imprint. So he's my brother in arms where I have my own imprint as well. Mine is Indy. He's actually working uh, with one of the major organizations and his is called Four Color Books. This is the first of many. Again, I'm hearing good things. So it's a beautiful book. Please have it on your coffee table. All right. So today we're going to talk about for the Bring Your Work Show, when to quit your side hustle job or role. Um, quitting is really important. I've done some TED Talks about this. Again, you can check it out at youtube.com slash Brown Damon and check out all my TED Talks where, again, particularly here in America, we tend to want people to keep going and say, you know, Quitters never win and winners never quit and all those things that we hear, especially as my little kids get get into the sports because they're of that age. And it's like some of that verbiage doesn't quite fit. If in my own instance, if I didn't quit being a full time journalist, that never would have become an author. If I didn't quit becoming a full time author, that never would have become an entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things that Essentially, it brought me to you and it brought so much joy, at least personally to me, and hopefully some of that to you and made influence on the world. Even becoming a coach and coaching hundreds of people at this point, those things wouldn't have happened if I didn't let go of the previous stuff that didn't work. Not saying that I completely let it go, which we'll get into it, but yeah, because obviously I'm still a journalist. I still do lots of writing, you know, all those things, but it's part of a bigger picture. And when you're thinking about leaving something, quitting something, which the discussion about the great resignation. And I talk about it in Career Remix, which is kind of the impetus for the book. Before they named it the great resignation, um, I obviously was already working on the book because books take a while. I've been working on the book for about a year. Um, so before they named it the great resignation, but a discussion about like every month, again, here in America, I think in April, 5 million people quit their jobs. But then as I talk about, um, I talked about that in um, our uh, our. Only me. The, the daily newsletter that I send out over at joindamon.me. It's free for, free for free to check it out. It arrives every Wednesday morning. So this Wednesday morning, y'all would have gotten the, a letter about that where it's like, there's a difference between quitting and opting out. Quitting is saying, forget this. I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Versus opting out is saying, I'm opting out of this and I'm moving on to something better. I want to create something better. Even though you might not have a specific idea as far as what that better is, you at least have that feeling of it, which if you're familiar with my work, I talk about that a lot. It's not just, I want to have X amount of money. It's not just, I want to have this particular job. It's more like, I want to have this particular feeling when my day is done. 
I don't want to wake up in the morning and not hit the snooze alarm 50 times because I hate my job. Like little details like that make the difference. That's the feel that you want to have versus just going after the next job. That also applies, ironically enough, and that's why I mentioned in the subtitle, or I guess it's just the title, that also, also applies to side hustles. Because sometimes we have these side hustles, which essentially is you have your day job, you have your side hustle. We have these side hustles sometimes where they're just on the side and we're just doing them and we hope to make it big money with them or make a bestseller out of them or get on Shark Tank or whatever with our side hustle. And sometimes they don't work. As I talked about in um, my TED Talk, the um, um, Why You Should Try For Good Enough, again, it's on my YouTube channel. What I talk about in there is for every one thing that I've done that's you know been uh, consumed by the public or in the public eye, released, published, whatever term you want to use, there's like a dozen things that didn't make it. Now, there's different reasons why they didn't make it, but some of them was because it's just not going to work. So not only is it about your day job maybe not fitting what you're trying to do, but also about those side hustles and the things that you're trying, hence the word trying. Hence the word experiment, hence the word side hustle, because you're doing it on the side until it either blooms into something better. Well, I guess three different ways. It blooms, it blooms into something better, which is awesome. It stays steady and it's really good, or it doesn't fit you anymore. If the side hustle is not your main thing, you can let it go. So today we're going to talk about letting it go. And I have three book recommendations, aside from Career Remix, that I think um, might help you with their journey as far as learning to let stuff go. The first one, ironically, is The Power of Habit. Um, this is a bestseller, whew, I want to say like a decade ago, and I just listened to it probably at the beginning of quarantine. Yeah, so I want to say while I was working on um, Built From Now, which is my previous book that came out at the top of the year, because I think I mentioned, I might mention it in Built From Now or definitely inform my thinking as far as habits and structures and um, systems, which... I'm really big into systems and organizing your life in a way so that so that not necessarily that you can be productive, because I think that's kind of a toxic word nowadays. <laughs> we're, 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 we're going in a different direction, um, but more that you can be fulfilled with a, with the resources that you have, because sometimes you can't multiply your resources. You know, I could talk about that all day. You know, got two little kids and, you know, I'm raising them with my wife. And we're still sheltering in place and they have their needs. They have their emotional needs. They have their physical needs. They have their mental needs, which I'm really big on. Um, and then I have my own career and I have many, many different things I'm working on and I'm doing, including my one-on-one -on -one coaching practice, as well as, you know, this new book coming out, which is coming out just after this recent new book that came out in January, built from now. And so sometimes you can't multiply the amount of resources that you have. So you end up having to work on your systems and your habits to stretch them as much as possible. This book is really important. Number one, it's an excellent book as far as how habits are created. But it's also an important book as far as how habits are broken. Um, who talked about that? Quite a few folks have talked about this. Um, I'm thinking of um, the book Upstream by Dan Heath. I love that book. It was actually one of my favorite books that I read this year. I think it came out like a year and a half ago. Um, fantastic book. I mentioned it uh, a few times in Career Remix where he talks about systems, patterns, and habits. Um, another great book about that would be um, the Wo A World Without Email. If you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Brown Damon, or if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you can um, go ahead and do a quick search for, um, oh man, I'm blanking on his name. You can tell I need my coffee right now. <laughs> Cal Newport, and I know Cal, shout out to Cal. Sorry, Cal. Um, he did an excellent book called Deep Work, which is how I got into him. And then when he came out with a new book, uh, A World Without Email, uh, around the time that Build From Now came out at the top of the year, I reached out to him immediately. I'm like, okay, we got to talk this time. You got a new book out because he, he definitely doesn't do that many interviews just because he's off of social media and he tends to be more focused on deep work. So to have a half an hour with him where I interviewed him was a treat. I mentioned some of the interview in Career Remix, but if you want to hear the whole interview, just look up Cal Newport on uh, my channel, again, at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. And if I get a chance, I'll throw the link below in the replay of this YouTube. Anyway, he talks about um, people are being focused on email, but email is more about habit. At least that's how I interpret it, where it's like, I wake up in the morning, I check my email. I don't think about what I'm gonna do next 
I automatically go to, I become, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I become reactive as opposed to proactive. You get into these habits. I need to get other people's input before I think for myself, which essentially in some ways is what email has become. Same thing with Slack. Email just happens to be the nomenclature that we're working on right now. So if you're looking to move on from where you're at right now, you have to think about the ways that it's ingrained into your systems. If you're used to having, for instance, a donut and a coffee, I'll give you an even better example. Used to grabbing donuts every Wednesday for the people in your office. And then, and we're talking old school before quarantine, or if you're in a, in a safe office, you grab donuts for, you, for your team and maybe some coffees for your team. And that's your job every Wednesday. And it kind of rotates, you know, Susie has it on Thursday, uh, Chaniqua has it on Friday, et cetera, et cetera. It goes, goes in a cycle. You deciding to quit your job or your side hustle, your particular role. I've been on, you know, been on the, um, the boards. I've been a board member, a board of directors and stuff like that. So you have different roles, hence the title as far as different roles. And that's a habit. And let's say you do that for years, let's say decades in some cases, with you deciding to pivot towards something else or to quit your job or quit that role, you're losing that habit. So on Wednesday morning, you might feel a little lost. That's why it's important if you're going to quit or leave or change your career or what have you, you have to understand these habits that are fit into, fit into it. Uh, Charles calls it uh, keystone habits, where there's certain habits where you can change one thing and all these other things change. Quick example, um, if you exercise every day, not only does it make it better as far as your general health, I mean, that's pretty much agreed upon, but also might make it easier to keep your metabolism up as you get older, which has a lot of benefits. It might stave off uh, diabetes and heart disease and all these things. So changing this one habit, and let's say that Keystone goes, kind of like the Keystone. Um, I'm from the East Coast, so I think of uh, the Keystone State, you know, Pennsylvania, where, where Keystone is a bunch of stones that make an arch. And, and the Keystone is actually in the middle. You remove that stone, everything falls but that stone is somehow keeping it all together. It's amazing, amazing physics to see. If you remove that keystone habit, then everything else falls apart. Whatever roles you have, particularly the longer that you've been in that role, there are certain habits, perhaps keystone habits that are tied to that particular role. So as you're moving on to the next thing, you need to be sure to, as Charles says, this, this is how I interpreted it, you have to have habits that replace that. So instead of every Wednesday getting donuts and coffee for you know your colleagues at your office, which you're not going to be doing anymore, perhaps you go for a jog, or perhaps you go make a smoothie or get a smoothie, or perhaps you get a coffee and a donut for yourself and for your spouse or for your family or whatever, and that's your habit. Because those habits, those changes get way more difficult if we don't know if we don't understand the emotional ties we have to those habits. So as you're thinking about moving on from one thing to the next and the so-called great resignation, The Power of Habits would be an excellent book to kind of have by your bedside. <laughs> and it's a pretty quick book. I, I think the audio book's probably about six, seven hours, but I enjoy it, enjoyed it thoroughly. I think he's a New York Times writer, I think for science, or at least he used to be. So it very much has that breezy journalism feel. I highly recommend it, particularly, you know, as you look to, to do your next thing. For the channel and what I recommend watching kind of like a, a pairing with it, kind of like a sommelier, is I have a playlist, all free, called Smart Creative Habits and Routines. I'd say it's about a dozen different videos uh, from the past year. because We're approach, approaching a year now with the show. And they're all talking about what I'm talking about right here. Habits, routines, systems, and all those things. Go ahead and dive in. Have a good time. Um, I think each video ends up being about 10 minutes long. Some of them a lot shorter, some of them a little bit longer, but it all has the feel. You don't have to watch all of them, but they're all collected for you for that distinct purpose. So hopefully you enjoy that good stuff. All right. One of my favorite books, I've recommended it several times since we started the show. We, as in me, <laughs> and we, as far as you joining me, is The Dip by Seth Godin. 
big Seth Godin fan. That's become clear in my books. And even with some of the work that I do, I got a chance to work with him about a year ago through the marketing seminar. So shout out to Seth and I always appreciate your wisdom. This is a book that really turned me on to Seth. It's super short. Um, I got into the audiobook um, around the time that my wife and I's first child was born. And I was doing my first startup. She went back to work. And so I had a four month old and uh, a very new startup called So Quotable. And I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And this audiobook really helped me make the decision of I obviously wasn't going to let my son go. But if I was something where I could, where if, if it was possible for me to be an author, be a journalist, be a first time solo founder, because I became shortly after I started, I became a solo founder, which I was not expecting, um, you know, and be the primary care, caregiver, caretaker of, of a wife and I's first kid, who again was like four or five months old at the time. And this is like a breakthrough audiobook as far as helping you make decisions as far as what to keep and what to let go. Also, as far as priorities, again, like I was saying, like there's no way that <laughs> I was going to like neglect our kid, or neglect my kid, like that wasn't going to happen. But all those other things, maybe it wasn't time to do a startup. Maybe I need to put books to the side. Maybe it was other things I needed to quit and, and not even quit, but put down temporarily. And I think that's a really key distinction to say there's a difference between saying, you know, this line of work isn't working for me right now. I'm feeling burnt out, I'm feeling cranky about it. I'm going to take a break or put it down for a little while. Um, one of my good friends said this recently, and you know who you are, where they were like, we made this decision, but that decision was made for like a year, let's say. So it wasn't like the decision was going to be, wasn't going to, was permanent. It just, it wasn't going to be revisited for a little while. There's so much beauty. It was such a powerful statement where it's like, oh, yeah. It's not like you're tabling your the decision. You're making a decision now and you re revisit it at a set period of time. There's a level of peace that comes with that because for that year, you're not worried about that decision. It's like, let's, it's not like, it's not like, let's not think about it right now. It's like, let's make a decision for right now and then we'll revisit it in, you know, in a year. There's certain things during that period of time, you know, the two years that I did my two startups, um, including Cuddler, to the sell, sale of Cuddler when it got acquired right after my son's second birthday. So again, it was like a two-year process where I didn't write any books during that period of time. And I've been relatively prolific to that period of time. But books went to the wayside. Um, I did a lot less writing because I was running a startup, particularly a second startup. It got really popular. Suddenly, you know, I'm a co-founder of one of the most popular startups at the time as far as apps. So it's like, which is called Cuddler. I talk about that in, in the new book, Career Remix, as well as the older books. So it's like with me doing all that stuff, it's like, no, I'm not going to be able to write a book right now. <laughs> like I have a then toddler. I have a toddler and I'm running this startup and I'm doing this and that. And I'm getting an interviewed for this magazine, all this stuff. How am I going to write a book? So I essentially quit being an author for those two, three years. And I came out with the, the Bites as Entrepreneur, and then I've done eight books in the past five years. But I'm not, a, I'm not a founder anymore. We sold the company. So that thing that I quit, I ended up picking it back up again. The dip gets into that a bit, but more importantly, the judgment process as far as what your priorities are, which at the end of the day should be the main um, North Star, count Compass, whatever, or whatever nautical or... Uh, or a land-based term you want to use as far as finding your way. It's, yeah, it's it's key. I listen to it regularly. The audio book is excellent, but I love I love Seth's storytelling, so it works really well. It's an hour and a half. Again, I listened to it when um, I was, uh, you know, when shortly after our baby was born. So I did not have a lot of time. This is a perfect book if you're in that same situation where you don't got time for that. This is a good book for that. Another one I'd recommend as far as uh, videos, a good pairing would be when I, when should I quit something? This is also just by coincidence, extremely short. I think it's one of my shortest, shortest episodes. I want to say it's like six, seven minutes long. And I talk about three different people. I talk about uh, Seth Godin and some of the principles in the dip. I talk about Jerry Seinfeld and him quitting Seinfeld and the conversation I had with Oprah. And even I think I talked briefly about Oprah's dynamics with that as far as quitting, because she essentially had to quit her daytime talk show to start the own network. 
but she couldn't have both. <laughs> Again, it was like me being a founder and me being an author. Couldn't do both. <laughs> so one had to get put down while the other one became a higher priority. That's okay. This video, again, it's like less than seven minutes. Um, I, I like the video a lot. I think it'll break down some of the concepts we're talking about. And if you want to get more insight into the dip, as well as see, see some um, real world applications of that, that I can't quite get into because I want to respect the, the length of this show, you know, go and check it out. I think you'd appreciate it. Last one I recommend is from another colleague of mine, Side Hustle by Chris Gillibal. Shout out to, to, um, to Chris. Hope you're doing well. This book is fascinating um, just because I have been doing side hustles for a while and I had never seen a book. How can I put it? I wish this book existed when I started doing side hustles. That's the best endorsement I can give because he breaks it down into a science. And he actually has a podcast. I think it's still going, but I think it's like a thousand episodes, even if he stopped. Props to you, Chris, because he had an episode, I am not kidding, every single day for years. Side Hustle came out when my book, uh, The Ultimate Bites Entrepreneur, came out, and that would have been 2017. And I remember visiting him in, when he had an event in Detroit, because I was living in the Midwest at the time, and went to support him there and bought it on the spot and got it signed and all that stuff. Man, I think he had the podcast going on for at least three years. Yeah, until he moved on to the next book. So we're talking like a thousand episodes. So even if he didn't, even if you, um, even if he stopped, be sure to check it out. They like just literally called the Side Hustle Podcast. What I thought about it, I would add it to edit it to the links before we started. Anyway, Side Hustle is an excellent book. The reason why I think it works for me is because it employs the philosophies that that Chris had talked about well before he did the book Side Hustle. You see, he's similar to me where he has a long line of books well before he got the, the books that he's most notable for, including like the $100 startup and things like that. So again, he's been pretty, pretty prolific. But one of the things he talks about is that you, traditionally we um, create, we market or sell. Sorry, we create, we market, and then we sell. I create something in my basement, you know, proverbial basement, create something in my basement. I um, market it or share it out with the public. And then I, I send it, you know, ship it. That, let's use that term. That's Silicon Valley term that I know, know better. And then I ship it. He recommends a different process. First, you sell it, as in market it. Then you create it and then you ship it. And what happens is that you gauge and figure out if your audience wants it. And even to take a step further back, you gauge or figure out who your audience actually is because you can't market it to everybody. As soon as someone says, my stuff is for everybody, well, they're doing the red flags on Twitter right now. <laughs> Big red flag. If you're saying my stuff is for everybody, then that means it's for nobody. It's the... Um, the um, Oh, I forget the term, but it's the the wandering abstract. And I'm screwing up the term for it. So as opposed to being specific, you're being really abstract. When you're abstract, then the people that you would serve the most don't know it's for them. And the people that you're not trying to serve, not that you don't like them, but it's not for them, they might grab it anyway and be disappointed because they don't know it's not for them. So no one wins. So the more specific you are, the better you can be. This is just one of the gems that he talks about. Uh, he expands it quite a bit in the book, but I heard about it from other stuff that he's done. I actually talk about it very briefly in um, Career Remix as well, because again, I've loved his work. I don't know if I quote Side Hustle, but I think I quoted one of his interviews where he talks about that. And it's beautifully done. Anyway, Side Hustle, as you can tell, serious book. It's from idea to income in 27 days. So you can have your stuff up and going by Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> but... I think the other part of it, which might even pertain even more to your subject today, is that it also talks about when to let a side hustle go, when it doesn't cut the mustard. And so as we get excited about starting new things, at least I do, I'm excited right now just talking to you and just having a, a new thing to talk about on the show, but we don't often talk about when to let things go. He talks about that as well. And 
it's not as sad as you might think. It's more like that gives room for the next thing that could actually change the world. But if you're busy holding on to the stuff that doesn't work, then obviously it's not going to work. A good parallel to this or a good companion um, after you read it or even before you read Side Hustle, <clears throat> excuse me, is how many customers do I need to make a living? It's based on um, this video. I think the show premiered like about a month ago. It's based on Kevin Kelly's theory of a thousand true customers, where if you have a thousand dedicated customers that pay you a hundred dollars a year, you're making a hundred thousand a year and you're making six figures. So as an independent creator, I've been independent for now decades. <laughs> you see the gray hair coming in. So that's that concept is just so important if you're going to create something, particularly if you're quitting a job or a role, some type of security to move on to the next thing. You got to figure out how to make a living. The millions of people that are uh, that are quitting to do this great resignation, they're part of this great wave. Where are they going? You need to have some type of plan for that. I talk about this a little bit. As far as the great resignation, um, what you need to have a side hustle get off the ground so you actually can make a living on it. And maybe the case where you're doing a side hustle and you're not able to make a living, and maybe this can help unlock what those issues are. All right, I, I try to keep it at a half an hour and I am talking today. So I so appreciate connecting with y'all. Again, the books I would recommend would be The Power of Habit, by Charles Duhigg, The Dip by Seth Godin, and Side Hustle by Chris Gullenbaugh. Um, They're all doing great work. You can't go wrong with this. If you want companions or similar videos that kind of talk about the work in each of these books, be sure and scroll up or check out the links below and you'll see the pairings for Watch Next. Again, my name is Damon Brown. This is the Bring Your Wear Show. It comes to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free at youtube.com slash brown or just click the link if you're already watching on YouTube. I so appreciate your support. It's free and it lets me know that you're appreciating this content. Most importantly, as y'all subscribe and like and share and comment, it lets other people know automatically, as I used to say in Silicon Valley, I used to say that term, but now I'm okay with that term 15 years later automatically, it'll actually go and start to push it out to other folks who are like-minded and who actually could get insight from this as well. And of course, you can go ahead and share it, share it on links, share it on links, share the links on LinkedIn, on Facebook, wherever you happen to be, whatever Facebook happens to be named now. I think they're changing the name, but I don't know what's going on today. Wherever you happen to hang out at, even if you texted other folks, feel free to share it. And, and I hope you're enjoying the content. And again, my new book, Career Remix, Get the gig you want based on the skills you've got. It's coming out mid-January. You can learn more about it at mycareerremix.com. If you're on Amazon or any of the other major players, just click the link, pre-order it. It's a decent price. One of the things that um, someone wiser than me, definitely wiser than me because they were giving me serious wisdom, told me is that whatever you charge for something, give people at least 10x that. I'm doing that with Career Remix. So, you know, Go ahead and pre-order it. You're going to get your money worth for sure. Again, it's a Bring Your Worth show. And remember, until next time, you can always go from now. You can always bring your worth. I meant the other way around. <laughs> Have a wonderful day.